Hello YouTube. I figured it was about time for another H1 project video. So this week's project, we are going to be replacing both of the heated windshield sections in this 2000 H1. I'm pretty sure this is still the factory glass, 20 some years old. It's getting pitted up really bad and you can't really see that uh, in the video, but it's got some rock chips here and there and I think it's just time for it to get replaced. So. This is the factory heated glass, and uh, since I'm in Phoenix, I use my heated glass exactly 0% of the time. And if you've ever bought these uh, you, for your truck, you know they're like 12, 13, 1400 bucks each. That's each side for this glass. So I opted to go the cheaper route since I don't need the heated function. And this is just the plain glass. I think I got these from HPG, they were about 139 bucks a piece. And uh, they have a slight tint to them with the border up on top, which is exactly what I wanted. And then uh, on this one, I've got to glue the mirror puck on, which they didn't do this time. Uh, you got to do that yourself. And then I bought the kit for that. And uh, I think this was like 22 bucks for what looks like to be one drop of glue inside this thing. So that's ridiculous. Also have the polyurethane sealant adhesive to uh, fill in any gaps as you're putting the thing back together and then if you i've done this before and trying to get this polyurethane epoxy out of one of these does not work i mean unless you're gi joe with kung fu grip you are going to break your fingers trying to get that epoxy out of this gun now they say you can put this glue in a bag and then soak it in hot water for a while and warm it up but um I'm not doing this again because the last time it was like I got halfway around the first section and I almost didn't have any strength left to squeeze this stuff out. So this time we're going with, uh, I picked up the Milwaukee uh, M12 uh, cordless uh, caulking adhesive gun. So this is really nice. You can dial up the speed. When you let off the trigger, the rack backs up just a little bit so you got no drip function. So hopefully this is going to make it a lot more consistent and easier and we'll get that glue out of there in a hurry. And then... Uh, Gonna use this Woods Power Grip to try to break the windshield free. That will come later. And uh, so before we do all this, we've got to take the we got to take the light bar off. We've got to take the um, intake snorkel off. We've got to take all the trim off the bottom, up around the top. The center light bar uh, goes up the windshield there. And I still have my clearance lights up there, which pop off. Windshield wipers, they're quick disconnects. They come off pretty fast. So we gotta get all that out of there first, and then first I gotta pop the hood and disconnect all my uh, all my lights, but they are on quick disconnect, so um, it's gonna make it easy. So um, there's another feature we're gonna install while we're doing all this, and we'll talk about that in a second. Along with replacing the windshields in this truck, I decided I wanted to put in a uh, backup camera at the same time. So if you saw my last video where I, um, put the spare tire carrier in the back of this truck. If you look out my back window, all you see is tire tread. Uh, not a lot of view coming out of that, so you can't really see if there's a car right behind you. And if you look in the uh, mirror, same thing. You can't see a whole lot using this mirror. And um, I like this mirror, but it's got the compass and the, and the uh, temp in it, but I'm gonna lose that feature. And uh, you know, I searched high and low to find it find a brand new mirror for this truck uh the factory one and uh because they're they've been obsolete for a long time but now this one's gonna go and um the other one that i'm gonna replace it with is a really cool one i found it's made by autovox it's a v5 pro and it's got some really cool features and um i'm gonna power this thing up i got it kind of got it mocked up on the best on the bench here it comes with a gps so you have a compass and time and this is a, uh, a nice little camera that I came with, but it just didn't give you a lot of options. It's got a double stick pad on the back here, and you're supposed to maybe stick it to the inside of your glass on your car or truck. But I'm putting this up on top of my light bar, and there's no way to mount it. There's like no, no bracket, no screw holes or anything. So what I ended up doing was machining this, uh, this housing out of billet aluminum and mounting it up here and I've got a swivel on it so now I can ro rotate it up and down and get it where I wanted and that thing's just machined out of a huge piece of bar stock and the camera goes in from the back side and uh, now you can like you know you can throw a basketball at this thing and it's not going to knock your camera out of place 
Then the wire runs through this bar here, kind of goes up here, up and through the top, into the back. And then I still got to run this wire uh, up to the front, which is going to require taking some panels out. But to show you what this thing looks like, I'm just going to plug in the, uh, the 12 volts right here. And then this thing powers up. And you can turn that chime off. There's some really good features on this thing. And, and I'm going to... I'm gonna open my garage door so you can actually see, put this down here, you can actually see how much your field of view is on this camera. I got a lot of, a lot of sunshine coming in here, but. So what's nice about this thing is the whole mirror is is the uh, you know is the screen and the, a lot of them you just have a little tiny little uh, window in here for your mirror and this camera has like a hundred and forty or hundred and fifty degree viewing angle uh, horizontally left to right so um, it's a really clear image you can even actually move it around a little bit to adjust it this way and then. Another nice feature is uh, there's an SD card in here and you can see the red lights on. So it records in uh, whether you want like one minute, three minute, five minute loop. So it just continuously records. And um, so you always have a video of what's going on. This is designed to be on all the time. So this is going to be my view. And um, it's, a, it, it's a crystal clear image. And um, I get a lot of width out of it too. I'm not going to be able to see the bumper or anything. But... Um, it's still going to be it's still going to be a great camera. Now there's also a front camera in this that uh, records as well, but unfortunately in the H1 this is right up against the pillar in the center, so we're not going to get much use out of that. But I really didn't care about that. So some of the other features on here are really nice. On the wire there's a 12 volt lead that if you hook it up to your uh, your backup camera you'll get the grid lines, but you don't need to hook that up if you don't want to. If you swipe right you get your grid lines. And what's really cool about this is everybody knows how wide the H1 is. You can you can drag these and you can set them and you can put these things anywhere you want. So you can find out where the track is on your uh, on your H1 and you can set these things up accordingly so you know where it's going to go. And then uh, you can take it back and then you have your clock here. Uh, you can tap on the screen and you get you get all your settings and you can um, yeah I'm going to stop recording. You can change all the, the resolution, you can go general settings, and there's there's a whole lot of stuff in there. Uh, and it's also, what else is cool about this is um, you can set it up to where if somebody bumps your vehicle, it just like taps it or whatever, it will start recording while you're not there. So you can kind of get an idea of, you know, what's happening around your vehicle, and it'll you'll be able to play back the videos on it. So uh, about 200 bucks for the whole kit with everything. And um, this one mounts a little bit lower than the factory one that's in there. So when we go to glue this uh, little mirror puck on, we're just going to put it on the glass and we're just going to move it up like maybe two inches when I glue it back on. And then uh, it'll position that mirror exactly where I want it. So first thing I got to do is start taking things apart. So. The roll bar's got to come out, all the trim, the snorkel, everything. So I'm going to get this stuff all peeled away. And then um, I had an idea for uh, pulling the glass out this time using this uh, Woods Power Grip. And we'll come back when I get set up to that part because taking all this stuff apart right here is going to be kind of boring to watch. So I'll be back shortly. We are back and we got everything off uh, the front of this glass that needed to come off. All the trim, the wiper arms, the light bar. It took about an hour or so to get everything off of there. And if you take this stuff off, it was filthy up in here. So this was all brown underneath. This was all kind of mud just caked all up around behind these trim pieces from just years of uh, collecting stuff behind there. So. Before I started taking this glass out, I took a uh, just a wet rag and I just went around and just kind of wash as much of the loose dirt and everything off as possible. That way it's not falling all over the place, getting into the track. And and uh, just, just a lot easier to work clean than have to fight with a bunch of dirt and grime, especially when you 
uh, you're going to have like that wet polyurethane going back in there. You want to keep that track pretty clean. And everything that came out, the light bar and, uh, you know, it's nice having these Delphi connectors. They're super cheap. They're watertight. They already use them all over the truck. But if you know you have something that's got to come out eventually, take the time, put those on, and it comes out really fast. And then there's all the trim pieces for around the windshield and the bottom. And then there's the smaller stuff here, your light bar and your uh, your cap for that down the middle of your windshield and your arms, things like that. So it all comes apart pretty fast. And then here's the two mirrors side by side. So this is the new one, and then this is the factory one here. So they're about the about the same size, not too not too much difference, and um, you know, so it's going to fit up in there real nice. It's, it kind of sucks. I'm not going to be able to use the uh, the Ford camera on this one, and they both go into the same mount, so the mounts are uh, pretty much identical. This one's got a little screw in the center. You can tighten it up once you get it in there because it just lays in. This one has a spring clip. If you've never taken one of these out before, you just uh, get up behind there and just tap the bottom of it with a plastic mallet, maybe a little block of wood or something, and um, it'll slide right up off that spring tab. And then you just disconnect that uh, that connector in the back, and then it comes out. This one, uh, this one's hard to find. It's actually a almost a brand new mirror. hasn't been in there that long. And on the inside, oh, another thing I was going to mention: if you're working on a truck for long periods of time. There's a lot of interior lights in these trucks. I mean, one, two, three, f like five or six of them, seven of them. So I always make a habit of pulling out the uh, the fuse for the interior light. Would have been nice if they'd have a switch in here, but uh, to turn your dome lights off. But we all know that AM General was not about comfort. So um, anyway, on the inside, so I got the, uh, the uh, heated windshield connectors disconnected. There is just barely enough room to get these out from under the doghouse uh, to get, get a little screwdriver in there and release them and get them out. That way you're not having to take your doghouse out. And then, uh, you know, took the center panel out. I've got tweeters wired up into the top of this thing. So um, I'm not gonna take it out completely. It'll be fine right there. And plus I've got to take the old mirror harness out and fish the new one through there and get it down under the doghouse where all the connections are going to be made. So now we're about ready to um, pull this glass out and I'm going to try something different. So let me get set up for that and then uh, we'll continue with this video. All right, so I made up this little tool that was going to be a, uh, it was meant to be a saddle for this uh, suction cup right here. I was going to put that, I was going to put this on the glass and then uh, that would hold that uh, that handle in there to keep it from going anywhere. Then I was going to put a block of wood underneath here to create kind of a fulcrum. And I was going to start by wedging the uh, bottom corner of the glass out of the track. But guess what? It didn't work. I put a lot of pressure on that and uh, it didn't come out. So anyway, that was an idea, but it was a fail. So now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go around uh, with a razor blade and we're going to have to cut um, all this sealant down to the bottom of the track if we can and then uh we'll try taking it out again good thing good thing these things are going in the trash uh it would have been expensive expensive fail for uh taking out some heated glass but it's not any good anyway so away it goes anyway uh, let me start cutting on the razor blade and uh see if i can get one of these to fall out okay the glass is out so back when i was using the suction cup one little important step i forgot was if you take a razor blade and trim right down the middle of this uh, seal where it encapsulates, encapsulates the glass, if you pull that out all the way, the, uh, the windshield will actually just about fall out. But anyway, yeah, it's been a long week. I forgot to do that little step, thinking the whole seal was gonna come out with it, but uh, that wasn't gonna happen. So anyway, so now comes the extensive part of uh, cleaning all this old stuff out of the track. That's probably gonna take a couple few hours anyway. And uh, shop vac, definitely. I got a little shards of glass everywhere. You want to wear gloves. You want to wear eye protection. And um, now it's, it comes the fun part, getting the old stuff out. And once that's done, new glass will drop right in. So I will be back when, uh, when this is clean. All right, so two hours later, and uh, I got this track really clean. So all that stuff came out of there real nice. And you can just feel it if it's smooth and there's no 
no sticky stuff left in there and I uh, got a little corrosion going on down here in the bottom but not a big deal and once you get all the glue scraped out I basically just used um, a gasket scraper and a uh, and a just a, a chisel, a small, small chisel to get down inside that bottom groove there. And uh, once you get it all out, you can just put some lacquer thinner on a rag and you can get the little residual stickies off. And um, so both sides are super clean. And um, I did lose some paint on the center section because once I got the goop out of there, it just took all the paint with it. Not a big deal. There's a plate that covers all that stuff up, so I'm not worried about it. And then I got the, uh, the puck glued on or the button glued onto the glass here got a piece of rubber here in the bottom and very gentle pressure it's not really clamping that tight but so that is in the new location for the new mirror i'm going to let that set up for a while but i think i'm going to call it a day I've been out here a while and uh so the next thing to do is uh put those uh rubber seals on that um on that new glass maybe dry fit it see if it's going to go good and then uh put the bead of goop around it and wedge it back in there and those suction cups will come in handy for uh, setting that glass in there. It'll help even out the pressure, so uh, less chance of breaking something. But I think I got off on a tangent earlier when I said uh, I always take my fuse out of my interior lights, my dome lights, because there's so many lights in there. And if you have the doors open for, you know, two, three, four, all day, those lights will drain your battery. I mean, there's a lot of them in there, and even though I converted everything in there to LEDs, you're still gonna put a pretty good drain on your battery by just leaving the doors open. So every time I work on this thing and I have the doors open, I just pull that fuse out and uh, that way the lights don't come on. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna call it a day and then uh, we'll come back later and um, we'll get this uh, new stuff put in. Okay, welcome back. So uh, it is a beautiful Thanksgiving morning here in Phoenix. The weather is perfect. Uh, I'd have the garage door open, but it's um, got way too much sunlight coming in right there on the south side. So I'm going to close it for part of this uh, for this part of the video. Anyway, I got the seals on the glass. Um, it takes a while to work this stuff on. I mean, I think about an hour for both of them, actually. And uh, you want to make sure this is completely flat and down and the corners are all where they're supposed to be. And you could even dry fit this thing into the hole before you start gooping it up to make sure there's not going to be any uh, interference. So a little tip that I did uh, on a couple other trucks is I took a pair of scissors and just kind of cut that corner off on three sides. It kind of gets bulky on that molded, uh, that gasket right there on that seal. So just taking a, taking a pair of scissors and just kind of lobbing off the, um, the corners right there. I'm going to make sure they're not going to interfere inside the frame anywhere. So once you goop this thing up... You want to be able to put uh, this piece of trim back on as quick as possible because that's what's pushing your, uh, most of your windshield seal down inside the, inside the opening. So make sure this is all nice and clean and ready to go and you got the right one, even though they're both the same, but the back side, you know, you got junk on it. But I also got rid of the, uh, the, the crappy hex screws that came in the, uh, the truck originally. I replaced them all with uh, black oxide stainless button head screws. And if you didn't know this, all the uh, all the screws outside on the trim around the outside here, all the way down uh, even to the center, are all 1032s. These inserts up here that hold the bottom rail on, those are 1024s. So it's a little bit coarser pitch on the bottom, probably because they, these inserts are hard to find in 1032. So there's a lot of 1024s on this truck. But anyway, 1024s, 1032s, and... Uh, in case you want to change your screws out, they're different. But so anyway, I've got this thing. This has been out, sitting out in the sun for a while. It's actually, it's actually really warm. And I imagine there's a cap in there once I pop that off. But I got the tip opened up. I got about a quarter inch hole in there, but that should be enough. And I'm going to set the camera up. And we're going to do this first one in real time. And then uh, the suction cups. Uh, these things are great, man. You could, you could climb a building with these. You could just basically tap them a few times. And as long as that red line on there doesn't show, you've got, I mean, you probably got three, 400 pounds before that thing will come off of there. So anyway, it gives you a couple handles to work with. And um, so let me get the camera set up for, uh, for putting this first one in. We'll get the goop going and um, we'll, uh, we'll make a video of putting actually the first slide in. All right, we're all ready with the glue. So let's uh, 
let's get a bead down here and, and get this thing put in here. No, folks, that is a dream come true right there. Yeah, I will never use a regular caulking gun again. So that's a pretty good bead. Uh, plenty in there. Hope I have enough left to do the other side, but let's get this one going. So make sure your red lines, if you're gonna use these, make sure you, you know, you're down good. And you wanna put this outside corner in first because it's tapered. So it's a little bit tighter to get this one in there. And then this one over here just come in and then just sit down in there and you want to make sure you're down in that track all the way so you can take a rubber mallet and work that down in there and get a little further to go and you're not going to hurt the glass by tapping on it Once you get that down on there, you just work that in. I think I need to go a little bit further on this one. suction cups off and move them to the inside and pull it in as well. And we're going to do exactly that. We're going to see if we can get this one on the inside of the truck. Just about in there. We'll do the same thing with this one. And that is in really nice. So now what we want to do, before it has a chance to move, is you want to put your trim on. It'll help secure that in there before that, that urethane sets up really fast. So you want to have some of your molding in place. to help push that down in there.
so that's pretty much it for the first piece that uh that went in really well i'm going to get in there and pull on it just a little bit more help it along and uh maybe even help tuck this down in here a little bit get a flat blade putty knife in there and you can work that in a little bit more if you had to but that's it for putting the glass in when we do the other side and then we'll get the center trim put on and uh, the bottom rails bottom rails aren't super critical because there's a track here that the glass sits in already so those can just go in afterwards cover all that up but we'll be back in a little bit when the other side is put in well there it is folks new glass is installed and i am just very happy with the way this turned out so the fact that i had some uh, epoxy coming out of all the corners down here on all the way uh the three sharp corners top corner outsides bottom and i had a little bit on the inside tells me i've got plenty of sealant uh, inside the grooves put all the trim pieces back on put the lights back on before you screw the light panel down it's good always good to turn your lights on uh, make sure you've got them all connected well and the windshield wipers of course are just quick disconnects they have these little these little tabs right here that just lift up if you pop these up the arm comes right off but anyway uh this is done out here i need to um put the light bar back on put my intake snorkel back on but i won't bore you with that and as far as the sealant goes it's really funny down at the bottom when i popped the cap off there was this i thought it was going to be a, a screw on cap in case you wanted to save what was left but had this little ball rattling around in there i have no idea what that little ball was for maybe just a reminder for you that you need to take the pop top like a can of grease off the bottom but got this on Amazon, about 16 bucks a tube. Uh, next day delivery, it was awesome. So uh, had about, I guess there's about maybe an inch and a half of material left down inside there with a quarter inch hole cut in the end. So one tube will do you if you don't waste a bunch. And this right here, worth every penny. Uh, I will never go back to using a, uh, a manual caulking gun for anything after using that thing. So good to have around, I guess and uh so we're gonna get uh set up we've got still got some work to do on the inside we've got to get some wires put in the gps unit and i uh, get that interior uh, backup camera mirror installed and uh we'll come back when we get set up for some of that stuff all right so it's time to finish up everything on the inside of the truck we still got the centerpiece off right here and uh I had to mount that GPS unit somewhere and I was able to, I found this stainless steel bracket I had laying around and I ended up drilling and tapping a couple holes in the, in the frame here. And that GPS unit is just kind of double stuck tape to the top of that. So it's up and out of the way. You won't see it. It's nothing but plastic and just the vinyl top up top here. So uh, there shouldn't be any kind of signal interference and the wire just will just run down the middle and go down underneath and go under the doghouse. And the mirror itself, the cable on it's only about a foot or so long. So I didn't want the connection to be uh, stuck inside uh, the, this framework in case I had ever had to replace the mirror. So they give you plenty of wire on the harness. I mean, I ran the harness up and it's going to come out this little grommet on the side right here. And I'll leave it sticking out. And then once I plug the mirror in, I'll be able to uh, just tuck this connector up inside here. And it all comes down to underneath the doghouse. I mean, everything, everything goes to the doghouse. So the, uh, the GPS cables here, the harness is here, and it's a simple three wire hookup. You got a ground, you got switch ignition, and then you have a yellow battery wire. I think that one's for your, uh, if you, uh, have your, you know, security alert set up to where somebody taps the, uh, truck or bumps it, it'll start recording automatically. So I think that's what that yellow wire is for. So anyway, the, all these connections will be made down inside here. You pull the glove box out. Um, everything kind of connects down underneath there. So uh, pretty easy to get to. So I'm going to go ahead and button all this stuff up here. I'm going to get the mirror put into the mount. And um, we're almost done with this thing. And uh, we'll see what it looks like when I get, the, uh, get all this stuff put back together. Okay, we are back. And all of this interior stuff is back together. So... You always got to fight those wires. They don't fit up inside there very well. And um, I was able to get that wire pushed in there. So it's uh, only a couple inches sticking out. So if I ever have to take the mirror off, I can fish it all the way out to the plug and disconnect it there. And this mirror actually works as a uh, pretty decent rear view mirror, even when it's not on. So uh, if you want to use it with no power onto it, then um, 
then it'll work that way also. But I'm kind of excited to get this thing wired up finally. And this is almost the end of the project. So the only thing we have left to do, and I mean the only thing, is to fish this wire. Get the camera work here. Is to fish this wire all the way from the camera, which is behind the back seat already, all the way up to the front and connect into that harness. Now this is the little red wire they give you that I told you about earlier. If you want to fish that all the way to your uh, wire that turns on your uh, grid lines as you're backing up, you have to wire this into your your backup light. So if, either all the way to the tail light or find it in the harness somewhere, or maybe you can even find it up under the dash uh, coming out of the fuse box or something. If not, like I said, you can swipe right on the, uh, the mirror and the grid lines come up. You swipe right again and the grid lines go off. You can always, you can also hook this up to a 12 volt switch. So just as long as this can, you know, as long as this gets 12 volts, uh, the grid lines will come on. So uh, if you want to, if you want to power it up that way. So anyway, uh, we're going to, it's going to be a lot of work to put this in. So I'm not going to get, uh, get into that part of the video, but we'll come back when it's all done, wrapped up and working and we'll see how this thing looks. All right. We are at the end of this video. So I finally got that camera wire run all the way from behind the back seat. Got to take the seat out. You got to take all these uh, all these covers off the back. There's an original, uh, there's a factory wiring harness that runs through there. You got to take this inner kick panel out here. You got to take off the cover for the uh, seat belt recoiler. And these panels come out really easy. It just takes time to get it out, fish everything out. And uh, the plastic panel here, you got to take out your kick well, uh, foot well panel here. You got to drop your uh, closeout panel. Then you got to run that wire behind the doghouse and get it out over to where you're going to make your connections. So um, everything's done. The uh, Obviously, my fuse is back in for my dome lights, so they're all working again. And uh, what do you say we road test this thing and see what it actually looks like? So we'll get in, we'll start truck up, see what the startup looks like. startup screen and there you go they've got their uh you got your view comes right up and this is designed to be on all the time so this is what you're going to see another nice thing is you can put this thing wherever you want and your view doesn't change so you can point this thing right at you all the time get a really good view and uh position it just how you want now you've got uh you've got a couple different screens here and if you bring up your settings you have to turn your recording off to do this but there's your split screen with your front camera, and of course the pillar is going to block it so you can't see much there. And uh, you can have just the front camera, and you can have your regular camera. So uh, the grid lines swipe right, and your grid lines come up. I haven't adjusted those yet, I'll do that later. You can swipe right again, and they disappear. And then you've got GPS time and date up here. You can tap that, and you can turn it off if you don't want it and um, tap it again and bring it back up. And if you push and hold, you get your, uh, you get your compass here and you get your GPS speedometer. So we'll play, play with that a little bit when we start driving. But anyway, let's, uh, let's go for a ride. I've got the rear view camera adjusted to where you can just see the corners of my spare tire. And um, I think that'll be fine. I don't want any lower than that for the obstruction. But uh, let's get this thing out of the garage and go for a ride. That is a really wide, wide field of view.
just driving down my neighborhood street there's a uh, there's a really good view of what's going on behind you I can see the street all the way to the curb pretty quick way better than uh, way better than a stock mirror all right so let's see what that uh, compass looks like Okay, there we go. We've got the uh, we've got the speedometer. And we've got the compass. And I think that's going to work out great. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy with that. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. i got some other stuff coming up, and uh, have a great day.